She has one more game for Canada in this World Cup qualifying window. James Sharman, they take on El Salvador in El Salvador on Wednesday. And anytime I mention Canada and World Cup qualifying now, an instant smile just hits my face, given what we've seen over the last few months and what we know will be coming just a few months down the road from now. Okay. What an impressive window it's been for Canada, right? They beat Honduras. They beat the United States. No Davies, no Eustachio. El Salvador, playing in El Salvador, is still in itself a beast despite what that national team is doing right now. What do you expect for Wednesday's game, atmosphere vibe-wise? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, obviously, going into the depths of CONCACAF once again, and that whole narrative, how will they perform in the hostile environments? Well, we saw against Honduras with, with 50% capacity due to COVID. It wasn't really that hostile well El Salvador same thing they only have 50 percent capacity there as well uh the team's out of the hunt the fans aren't really aboard that bandwagon at the moment so it's still never easy going to these these For places sure. of course it isn't but it, it's not the the cauldron that that it could have been so that's a real bonus so I think Canada can just focus on themselves play their way and, and not worry about the intangibles off the field do you feel like they've done that in this window so far Honduras U.S. look the Americans had a lot of the ball. The Americans had more shots, but Canada was comfortable, it seems, letting them do just that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think throughout this campaign, John Herbin's got his team playing the way he wants them to play game to game. They're not reacting because of what the opponent's doing. And, and I think the versatility that the team's shown, both from formation to selections to changes within the game, allows him to do that. Because you're right, against the States, um, you know, they weren't at their best, but they were happy to sit in that low block and pounced on the counter-attack, kept the field very narrow, uh, and I thought it worked really, really well. Um, and obviously, 2-0 against the States, you know, at home, albeit, you know, it is a great result. So uh, I, I really think this team knows who they are now, tactically, from an identity standpoint, and they won't be bullied in, into anything. Do you think they know who they are personnel-wise yet? Though? Look, they've used a, a lot of the same guys, and yes, Davies and Eustachio have been hurt, and when they're in, they'd be in this lineup, obviously, in the starting 11, do you think over the next game and then next window, it's a chance for John Herdman and the Canadian staff to kind of see what else is out there? Yeah, that's a great question. If you look at the squad right now, I mean, we know most of the players. There's some kids coming in through, I know that, but most of the players, we, we know who they are now. I don't think they're at a point now to experiment. Yeah, um, They're not in the World Cup yet, and, and right. I think they will be. Um, but I think the magic number is still eight to finish top three right, with, with four games left. So, yeah. listen, they, they should do, I think it's four to finish in that fourth place, you know, which is a playoff spot. So they can't take their foot off the gas just yet. You know, right. a win against El Salvador sets them up beautifully to clinch, you know, early in, in the next window, maybe as early as the, uh, the Costa Rica match, maybe at home against Jamaica. Oh. You know, let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. No, right. Um, but, yeah, I, I think they know who they are, and he's obviously got his eyes on a lot of players who aren't in this squad right now, but... Um, this team know who they are, that, that brotherhood of culture they, they talk about. They really like each other. They're playing for each other. I don't expect too many massive changes, but he will rotate, obviously, because three games in seven days is a lot. There were four changes for the last match. I expect a, a similar number for this match. So people will have heard your last answer and be like, wait, Canada's not in yet? There was so much hype after that American <laughs> game. It felt like they're in. Is there a scenario in which they could qualify Wednesday or is it still a little bit out of the window yet? It's not going to happen Wednesday, no. No. I mean, okay. listen, they're, they're, no. I mean, I, I think the earliest feasibly they'll do it will be in that Costa Rica match. And even then, to finish top three, it might take the Jamaica match, which is still, you know, in this kind of qualifying quite early. It's very tight, right? Right. It as, is tight. As yeah. well as they've played, right, Faisal? I mean, you know, 10 wins, sorry, 10 matches, not one loss. They've won five straight. You look at the table, it's still pretty tight. Yeah. Um, but yeah. listen, they're looking really good because yeah. for them to, to fall out of the, the places now. I said it before, I think, earlier this week on Sportsnet, you know, it'd be one of the biggest choke jobs we, we've ever seen, right? Because oh, it would be not just them playing poorly, but other teams. Sorry, no. I know. Okay. It ain't going to happen. We're okay. No. My you whole know. lifetime has been this, James. My whole lifetime I know, has been I know. This. I wouldn't say book your flights just yet, but I would start looking at flights. Yeah. Let's say that, okay. shall we? All right, that's comforting. That's comforting. Um, <laughs> I think we can end it with a, a more of a macro question. Like, you, you saw the response on Sunday from the fans, both, you know, in person, online, in Germany, if they were locked down and unable to play like Alfonso Davies was like having the whole country embrace this, having a million people watch the game on television on a Sunday afternoon. What do you think this means for men's soccer in this country going forward? 
it really does feel like there's been a shift mm -hmm. in, in the public narrative around soccer, not just the men's team or this team, soccer in general. A and that's key because as John Herbman says, he, he told me this, he says for, for the women's game, which he obviously his heart's still there in many ways, for that to progress, the men's team have to be successful. Yeah. To bring money in. Yeah. We well, might be wrong, but the fact of the matter is for corporate dollars, you need to have a successful men's team qualifying for World Cups. Then the money filters down to the women's game, to the grassroots level, right? So it's absolutely key. And I really believe now, phase of that, the country's beginning to take notice. They still got to qualify, right? If they blow it, and like we said before, they're not going to blow it. But if they right. do, it all means nothing, right? But I really think that, uh, you know, they'll get to Qatar and then between now and then it's up to, you know, corporate Canada to wake up and realize that, yeah, it's a pretty big sport. You might want to be yeah. part of it. You and I would have uh, said this for a long time, but it's about damn time, James. Thanks for your time, man. It's about damn time, pal. You got it.